How much do you think this glass of water weighs? Right. No, no. A pound? A pound? A pound? A pound? Question. How much is it? How much is it? How much is it? Actually, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I hold this glass for five minutes, it doesn't make any difference. If I hold this glass until lunch time, uh, my arm is going to start to ache. If I held it like this till tonight, I'd probably finish up in hospital. And this is very much like stress. We hold on to stuff and we really have to learn how we can let go because stress is something that we all encounter you know unless you live in a mountain in Tibet somewhere you're going to encounter stress of some sort or another and there's something like three billion man days a year lost in America through people having time off work through stress and stress related illnesses so a lot of illnesses, they reckon over 70% of all illnesses have their roots based in stress. So it's, it's pretty big and um, as I say, it's, uh, it's something that we, we can't escape from. And there are two main types of stress. One is acute stress um, and, the other, and that type of stress is the one, let's say you're hurting down the motorway and you're talking away, oh, this way, talking away to your partner. <laughs> Um, and you look up and you see brake lights a few, a few yards in front of you, hit the brakes and of course all this adrenaline rushes through your body and all the muscles start to work and everything. Um, and that in some ways is a healthy sort of stress, you know, because the body gets rid of the adrenaline and, and you're okay. The, the killer, I think, is the, uh, the chronic stress and this is the continual drip, drip, drip of day in, day out of stressful situations. Um, and it really is something that we, we need to address both for ourselves and also obviously a lot of the people that come to you as clients, their problem is going to be based in, in stress. And one of the things I learned very early on being married to Kim was that men and women think differently about stress. So I would come home and I'd say, what's the day you had? And, say, no, no. and I would fix it. I would say, well, you can do this, you do that, you do that finished. And of course women don't want to hear that. Women just want to bring it all out, talk about it, they don't want any solutions necessarily. Um, but men are fixers, you know, men have problems and they think okay well if I do that, solve the problem. So we are quite different and I think um, I learned that pretty early on. And the other thing of course is that what stresses one person won't necessarily stress out another person. We're all different. We all have different stress things that, uh, that really um, stress us out. And um, I remember a few years ago I was taking uh, Michelle, our youngest, to school. She was about 15, I suppose. And oh, she was in the car. She got in the car. And I said, what's the problem? She said, I'm stressed. I'm stressed. So I said, what's going on? What's going on? She said, I'm having a bad eyelash day. <laughs> <laughs> So, so for a 15 year old, you know, if suddenly they get a blemish on their cheek and they're going out or they're having a bad eye, like, it can become very stressful. So as individuals, we need to look at what stresses us out. And a lot of the time, you know, we can do something about it, we can make some changes. There are certain things in our lives that we really cannot change. Um, let's say for instance, Let's say you're looking after an elderly parent, you know, it's, it's very, and they stress you out, it's very difficult to, to move away from that situation. Maybe you can get some help from the siblings at the time. But, um, so it's, it's something you have to accept, okay, this is stressful, I have to live with this for, for a while. But so many times things um, we can change, and people will come to you with illnesses, and it's pretty obvious what the problem, what's causing the problem. Um, but they don't want to make any changes in their lives. So we have to look at what is what is stressful to us. And I heard this lovely story so many years ago now that it was about some uh, test pilots, I think they were American test pilots. And their job apparently was to, to uh, train for months and months to cope with stress. And their job was to take these jets right up into the sky, 30, 40 miles, 
and then stall them, stop the engine, and these planes would drop, and then they'd start the engine up again. And I mean, these, these cars are incredible. What they found that these pilots, when the planes were dropping out of the sky, their breathing didn't get faster, their pulse remained the same, they didn't perspire. I mean, they were totally trying to cope with stress, the biggest sort of stress you can imagine. And what they did, there was only a group of about nine of them, they took four of these test pilots, apparently, and they put them into a daycare centre, <laughs> looking after little kids who were in six months and two years. Three of the four walked out after half an hour. They could not cope with the stress of looking after them. I can tell you that. <laughs> and I think that's often what happens in our lives. We, we change, we go outside of our comfort zone, and suddenly we become very stressed. And we had a doctor here a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about stress and hormones and he said exactly the same thing is that it's usually to do with change. Stress is usually brought on by, by change in our lives. So I know I worked for, uh, for Xerox for, for 10 years in England and I was, I was in the wrong, I knew it was a wrong job. I was like a round peg in a square hole but, but the money was good um, but I knew it was the wrong job for me and I you know, I obviously got quite uh, got stressed about it. And I decided eventually I needed to leave that job to, to be able to, to do more of this work. But a lot of people feel they can't make changes and therefore you have to learn how to cope with that, with that stress. So if you can't change something, then there is no point in stressing about it. You might just as well accept it. You know, I've seen people, not so much here, but in England, the, the motorways there, you know, they get jammed absolutely. And you're stuck in a motorway trying to get somewhere, and you look in the mirror and you can see the person behind get angry, you can see them hitting the steering wheel. What's the point? You know, you're not going anywhere. You might just as well put on some music and, and relax a little bit. So let's just talk a little bit about what stresses us. I'm just curious. Because we're all different. So Mia, what is it that stresses you? Children, okay, yeah, we can relate to that one. Family, yeah. The future, okay. Back up, what, sorry? Communication. Communication. So, what we have to do is to work out a strategy, I guess, for ourselves. So, how can we not get stressed about some of those issues? Because if you do, if you keep continue getting stressed about it, then there's a possibility of you becoming ill at some point. There were a couple of um, Canadian doctors many, many years ago now called Rob, um, Holmes and Ra, I think they did, they were called. And what they did, they created a stress scale. Uh, so they looked at every type of illness, if you will, and they gave it a mark out of 100. And they said the most stressful thing is death, is, is losing someone that's very close to you. So they gave that 100, 100 points. And then they put things like divorce, marriage separation, um, marriage. So they gave each one, and you've got this in your notes, so you can have a look at that. They gave each one of those a, a point a mark out of 100. Um, and then what happens is you, you add up the numbers, which <coughs> gave you a percentage chance of you becoming ill. So they were accurately forecasting people that are likely to become ill because of the different. Um, categories of stress that they, they were going under. And this ha happens a lot with people. Um, in England, one of the things a lot of people want to do is to retire and go and live by the seaside. You know, so what happens is they save up all their dosh and they get retire. They go up to the seaside and obviously by then they're, they're sort of in their septic usually. Uh, and then one of them dies. So there's the stress of moving, there's the stress of leaving the job. One of the partners dies. Um, and then they've got no friends. So it becomes very stressful, it's incredibly stressful to, to do that sort of thing. And so when you are, and this is for you as well as your patients, is when people say to me, I'm going to make a new start, I'm going to leave and go into a different place, get a different job, I'm going to get a new relationship, those are all incredibly stressful things. So sometimes it's worth thinking about just doing one thing at a time rather than trying to completely reinvent yourself in one almighty sweep because that can be uh, quite stressful. Sometimes 
sometimes you don't have choice. So then you have to think, okay, I need to be able to cope with this without getting stressed out. So think about that one. And the other thing which I, is really dear to me is we've got to keep our sense of humour. You know, I think we've got so serious in life and there's so much you know, stuff sent at us that we get stressed just by the sheer volume of information and communication these days. And it's really sad. Kim does a workshop um, and she's also trained as a, a yoga laughter teacher. But she was saying a few weeks ago that the, they measure the amount of laughter these days and it is considerably less. I can't remember the percentage of it. Especially children. Yeah. Children laugh now, 40% less. And they used to. 40%. I mean, that is sad yeah, to hear that, you know? So, and you know, how many times in life do we get so stressed about things and then you look back two or three months later and you think, why did I get so stressed about that? Well, it's all worked itself out, it all has a way of writing itself, if you like. And there's a, I think he's a, um, I think he was a reporter or an author. But anyway, there was a man who had cancer. And um, his doctor wanted him to have chemo. He told him he'd only got a few months to live. But he didn't want to do that. But he really loved, I can't remember, it was a Three Stooges or Laurel and Hardy, some of these really old um, comedians. And what he did, Norman Cousins, uh, and his book was Anatomy of an Illness. And he bought all this material he could get his hands on and he put himself into a hotel for a week. And all he did, he sat all day long just listening and watching these videos of these, these old comics. And people would walk by the door and all they could hear is this guy laughing on his head, laughing his head off. <laughs> you know? And uh, <coughs> anyway, we sitting there for a, for a week or ten days. The next time we went back to his doctor's for his checkup, which was about six weeks later, his cancer had completely disappeared. It's never come back. Because when you laugh, the body creates endorphins, you know, which is more powerful than morphine. <coughs> a great way of relaxing and helping to get rid of stress. So keep your sense of humour, really important. And what I was talking about some years ago, uh, of course, the next day I got an email from somebody who'd been on the course um, giving me a little stress meditation. And I'm going to read this to you, it's very short. Now, I have to tell you, at the end of this, it is British humour. Right. <laughs> Which I hope is a little different, but in British humour. But don't expect to laugh. Now, we all have people in our lives, I guess, who stress us out. You know, we all have some of the family members or people who work with that really stress us. So, bear that in mind as I read this through. Okay. Picture yourself by a stream. The birds are singing in the crisp, cool mountain air. Nothing can bother you here. No one knows this secret place. You are in total seclusion from that place called the real world. The smell of pine and blossom is on the gentle breeze. The soothing air of a gentle waterfall fills the air with a cascade of serenity. The water is crystal clear. You can easily make out the face of the person whose head you're holding under the water. 